here kindly. So I couldn't find any monk that will allow me to stick a burning heart candle into their orifice. So I'm going to use this person here. Their ear is really clean. I've just cleaned it out as well. So any wax that we find from this ear candle, well, it's not coming from your lady there. So I've gone online and it seems that people put some foil around their ear and there's nothing in there as of yet. Alrighty, we're going to burn down to the line. Alrighty, so let's check the patient. Oh, look at all that. doesn't seem to have done much. Let me stick a piece of tissue in there, go around the ear. Some people have claimed that you actually get wax put into your ear from these candles as opposed to removing it. No, not the case with this one. All right, let's cut this open. Interesting. This is just a piece of foam. Maybe that's in there to stop the wax dripping down the candle and then burning you on the ear hole. Is this the wax they were talking about? Hmm, maybe. But I am unconvinced. I don't know how that dummy could have produced ear wax. I'm pretty sure it's from the candle. Feels waxy. So let me uh, cut this ear candle up into pieces. Aha! Uh -huh. There's a little plastic, there's a little foam plug to stop the wax from the candle falling into your ear, potentially. All right, let me add some boiling water. Oh, piece of earwax from the other experiment. So there's definitely something floating to the surface. Uh, wax has a lower density than water, so it will float. If we look at the side, that's interesting. So once the lower density wax, if it is wax, floats to the top, what's left behind has a higher density than water and it sinks. So what I'll do is I'll let that cool down and then see if it really is wax. Okay, so what I think is the wax has dried. I think this might be the source of the wax after candling. Now, to check if it's wax, it certainly feels like wax. It floats on water like wax, it looks like wax. But I'm gonna try and make a mini candle out of this wax, just to confirm it is wax. Hmm. Alrighty, well, it certainly burns like wax. I think this is the source of the nastiness after candling. Now to be fair, some videos allow for the fact that some of the wax is from the candle and some of the wax is from your ears, but really, I'm not convinced. Okay, so what I want to try now is uh, if I take some blue wax off of this candle and jam it in her ear hole and ear candle again, uh, if the blue wax goes from her ear 
into the candle, then uh, I'm kind of convinced that maybe it is sucking wax out of the ear. Okay, so there's some blue fake earwax. I appreciate it's not real earwax. Uh, this is slightly less sticky, but uh, we'll see. Lovely. Uh, I don't think I'm going to pack it down. I think I'm just going to leave it like that. Uh, it should come out even easier, if indeed it comes out. So the blue wax is in there, and now I'm going to put in a candle. Come on. Lovely. All right. So if the blue wax goes from there up to there, I might be a bit convinced about this. Okay, let's see what's happened, if anything. The blue earwax doesn't seem to have moved, hasn't melted. Uh, let's open up the candle, see if any went inside. Alrighty, I'm just going to tap here. Because there's a little bit of blue wax that I think is just... Uh, transferred when I jabbed it into the ear hole. Now what I don't want to do is I don't want to cut this and then kind of push blue wax from the outside up inside. So what I might do is I might just snip the end off. Right, let's snip the end off there. Just where the filter was. Now let's go in. So let's see if there's any blue wax. Nope. I don't see any blue wax there. So no blue wax was taken out of the ear and transferred into the candle. It still looks like earwax there, but I, I really just don't think that's earwax. I think that's wax from the candle. So I can't think of a plausible mechanism to move this solid earwax up into this ear candle here. Uh, you could turn it from a solid to a liquid and a liquid to a gas, so you could melt it and then you could boil it. Then it would move up here and then you could condense and freeze it and that would allow the transfer. But the problem with that is for example, just to melt the keratin is 150 degrees centigrade. And if you wanted to boil the fatty acid component, that boils at 360 degrees centigrade. So that's way too high. Why do these have such high melting points and boiling points? Well, essentially, keratin has lots of hydrogen bonds, which is a very strong intermolecular force. And the fatty acids, even though many of them are liquids, uh, you'd still have to perhaps boil or evaporate them, and they take so long to evaporate. Imagine leaving a little pile of, a, a little container full of vegetable oil out. How long would you have to wait for that to evaporate and clear? I mean, you could go on holiday, you could come back in six months and it would still be there. Very slow evaporation rate. So this is a long chain fatty acid. Uh, normally they're even slightly longer than this. So why does this have such a high um, boiling point? Well, it's really hard to rip this molecule uh, from the other molecules there. It's hard to break those bonds, those intermolecular forces, and cause it to vaporize. And the reasons for that, well, first of all, there's a whole bunch of the long chain carbon and hydrogens here. Now, these have London dispersion forces, but they're the weakest of all the intermolecular forces. So surely that would give it a low boiling point. Well, although they're weak, there is a lot of them because this is quite a long chain, and also the shape of it. Uh, sticky sausage, non-sticky balls is how I normally teach it, but this has a high surface area, so that means that the molecules have a lot of room to have these intermolecular forces, so it's hard to pull them apart. If they were spheres, if this was wrapped around in a sphere, then the, the uh, intersection or where they touch would be reduced, so they'd have weaker London dispersion forces, and that would mean it had a lower boiling point. Uh, 
And not forgetting at the end here, this hydrogen bond, oh no, that is not a hydrogen bond, that's the IB trick. The hydrogen bond can be formed from this area here. So there's ability to form hydrogen bonds and there's even a cheeky dipole here as well. So these three reasons explain the high boiling point of fatty acids. The London dispersion forces, the ability to form dipoles and uh, the ability to have hydrogen bonds. So to sum up, I don't think these candles work. I can't see a plausible mechanism and I can't get them to do what they're supposed to do. Uh, there seems to be no evidence online that they work either. If you've got problems with the ears, go and see the doctor.